because I grew up really close by Plaza where, you know, it wasn't, it's not the best neighborhood, but you know, it, it could be better. So Plaza is a safe haven for kids like me who uh, don't really want to be a part of the things that go on in my, my neighborhood. Plaza is kind of like this magical, colorful place that you probably thought would never be here. And a lot of the kids that come here feel like this is their home, like they can be safe here. Like this is a place where they can be themselves, where no one will make fun of them, where um, people will listen to them and they learn art forms as they go along. So I think it's a great place. The thing that I love most is teaching now because it's I'm giving back in a way that I never thought I could give back. And I try to put everything I possibly can into doing it because I know that these kids depend on people like me and uh, because I depended on people like them or like me, I guess, now, so. I started working with this theater program with BJ. Uh, five years ago, while I was still a student at CalArts. But it's great for me to introduce students to a different aspect of theater, because I know, you know, when I was their age and I got into theater, I thought the only thing you could do was act. Like, I, that's all I knew about. And then I found out that there are a lot of other aspects of it. There's painting, sculpture, set design, lighting, sound, all of these other things that you can express yourself through trying to incorporate the students into that as much as possible, into making the set happen. So it's you know, partly about my design, but it's more about getting them involved in this. This is a mural done by the, the students in the CAT program. It was painted by the cast. We worked on it in three sections. First, uh, our choreographer, Marvin Tenney, worked with us to choreograph the students. We traced around them and then used those cutouts as stencils. Then we had the whole entire cast one Saturday. We just painted whatever graffiti style anybody knew, and it was all over and it was wild. Levi Brewster, our set designer, arranged the figures on the graffiti, and then they spray painted around them to get the shapes of the, of the students. And then they actually used this platform to perform the painting the actual students who silhouettes these are. Um, and there's another moment where there's a sculpture center stage and we bring out a pedestal. And then on top of that pedestal, these students become animated and they become the sculpture. So it was really just creating backdrop for them to become the art. That, so, so instead of painting a painting, we just build the frame and they become the painting. We have around 100 public performances and exhibitions every year. So, for example, the students in this theater program at Plaza de la Raza have eight public performances. Um, there'll be six free performances held here at the Margot Albert Theater, and then two free performances held downtown at the Red Cat, the Roy and Edna Disney Cal Arts Theater in the Walt Disney Concert Hall complex. Since they started in, in late September, and they've been working three nights a week all through the fall, and then uh, starting this semester in, I think, February, they've been working five nights a week um, and Saturdays. They made all the props, they, made, they painted the mural, they helped uh, on the set and they, they've uh, worked really, really hard. In terms of the culmination, uh, many of the new ones never know how it is until you've been through this whole process and been through the performance. So right now, they have five public performances under their belt, and now they're ready to shift into this new space for them. For the last three, four years, we have brought our play from Plaza to here. So we've toured it. And this is something that's really important in our program, is giving our students real professional performance experience and also experience in performing in two different venues. So they have to learn their cues, they have to learn their moves all over again in a whole different way. Well this weekend we're going to be uh, opening this play that we premiered a couple weeks ago at Plaza de la Raza and it's called um, Jacked, the Mystery of the Missing Muse. Every year we invite a well-known playwright to work with the group and We've been working with playwright Peter Howard, who has really written a play with the students and with a lot of their input. 
a lot of the things you'll see in the play, he workshopped with them. The play is a mystery. It's a mystery about an art theft. And the subtext is who steals art, who steals culture, who appropriates culture from other cultures. And it's a very interesting play. My name's Natalie Watts, and I play the leading role of Christina. I'm a statue, I'm a mural, I'm a teller. My name is Nadia Hill, and I play Ashley. Mercedes is emo on this play, and she has all things to cover. Um, I'm Maya, and I play Jackie. The character's name is Jonathan, my real name is Erwin. Uh, my name is Gabriel, and I play the detective. Hey, I'm Rocky Morales, and I'm playing Richie, another uh, high school student. My name is Janice Roque, and I play the angel. I'm Mario. My real name is Jose. Um, I'm Christina's older brother. My name is Rosalie Ariano, and I play the guard that talks. My name is Monique, and I play the specialist. My name is Michelle, and I'm a photographer on the play. My name is Cindy, and I play Jasmine, the hippie. My name is Meesley, and I play Henry, the dad in the play. My name is Stephanie, and I play an art Amy. My part in the play is Christina's grandma. My name's Chriseis, I play Miss Pitt and a teller. I'm Travis, and I'm also a high school student. My name is Kiana, and I play the mask. I'm the director. I think there's a lot of excitement. I think it's, uh, there's a lot of nervousness, and, uh, but they're, they're really pros. They're really, uh, they're pulling it off in a huge way. You know, we're not making kitty theater here. This is not, you know, this is theater. It's just theater. And and we're making it to entertain. If, if my life were a painting, it would be a rainbow. It would be meaningful, warm, and Each time a play really takes on something extremely mature, uh, something that's multifaceted, something that's not easy to understand. I think the process of making the play becomes a great educational opportunity. I clean this again, you tag it again, and I come back to tomorrow night. That's urban ecology. That's the circle of life on the street. <laughs> because they're young, there's another dimension to it. There's a part of them that I cannot ruin, I cannot mess with. They, they punch through everything. But only if you carry on with your mission of fighting an ethical art acquisition now. You know, and that, when you're watching that, that's the holy part. So, so that's the biggest challenge, and it's the most rewarding thing. It's why I'm continuing to do it. There's modesty, there's um, uh, obligation, there is um, you know, beauty, there is um, a deference, and uh, you want that voice, that voice has to come out. If my life were a painting, it would be a girl doing more of what she wants to do. The color would be red. And so with some, some young ladies, it's not an issue at all. Selling, we don't want any. <laughs> Sam Kamey, you know, the young woman who plays the grandma, she came out yelling like that, right? She was born with all that equipment and all of that desire. It's a political thing. My vote is my business. <laughs> but by and large, it's sometimes a challenge for a young woman okay. to allow herself to be heard in a way that appears to be uh, uh, outrageous. And they see they're around really strong women, right? Of all, every color and size and shape. We are the dreamers of dreams. Risha Hill, right? Amber Skalski, these women are, are novel, I believe, because these are relatively young women who have made a great investment in their own training as professional actors, so that's new to them. The permission continues and continues, and it's an expectation, too. It's a demand, right? If we can't hear you... If my life were a painting, there would be palm trees on a tropical beach. There would be a skate park, and I'd be the only one in it. My biggest challenge with the boys is movement, getting them to be comfortable, being able to 
be okay being an actor, then an actor is uh, muscular and dashing. You're looking for the cops? And um, that is totally hot. <laughs> perfectly acceptable means of artistic expression. Uh, Michael Ecliserio, the young man who plays Omar. Uh, he's he's multi-talented. He's a mariachi musician. He dances with knives. He's a folklore good dancer. But for him to come to, to acting is a real gift for us. And Marvin has a great deal. He's had a great deal to do with um, showing how incredibly dynamic and masculine motion is, movement, dancing, acting. You know, dance is something that you, you 